two pursuits, that's kind of awkward, but that's fine. Let's try to focus here because I think I have a good story to share with you today. I'm Aguil Key. I'm a teacher who tries to change the world with love and quite interesting activities. With my students, we rebuild the Palmyra monuments in order to teach vocabulary and also build our life skills. I try to do design thinking, and with uh, Pinocchio mind mapping, I try to teach simple future to my adult students. I also find myself in refugee camps, where my students become the teachers of refugee children. Uh, and sometimes I find myself in nature with my students smelling herbs and then scanning QR codes to discover their magic powers. But I guess I'm here today because I managed to hack the brain of dyslexia. In I Love Dyslexia School, this is the first and the only language school, language school in the world where we teach English as a foreign language to students with dyslexia learning differences in a holistic way. And this is an award-winning school that gave me the opportunity, the magical opportunity, to find myself between the top 50 educators in the world for the year 2016. You think that that's why I'm here? Do you really, that, really, that I'm on this stage because of only this? No. The real reason I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, is because I believe in fairy tales. And I dare to admit it right here in front of you. I believe in fairy tales because these are the most real things in life. And they do have one thing in common. Everything happens for a reason, and the reason is always love. And to prove that I'm right, this is me in my office with my favorite painting. In the painting, you can see Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. She's wearing her magic red shoes. You know why? Because they are powerful, and they can take her anywhere she wants in a flash of a moment. I always knew that I wanted this kind of magic pair of shoes because my life would be full of journeys. And the first time I wanted this real magic pair of shoes was when I was 19 years old. Okay, that, that was my problem. I was 19 years old and I wanted to teach. But who would hire a 19-year-old kid to teach in Greece? Or anywhere in the world? Nobody. But I found a job. Only it was a little bit far away. I had to travel from Greece, Greece, from Greece to Athens, Greece, to Spokane, Washington. Do you see the distance? I mean, I lost myself in flights. I don't know how many nights I was in, and days in, in flights. And to tell you the truth, you know, these cheap kind of flights that they serve you a banana every, every seven hours, you know? <laughs> but that was okay. Because when I landed and I found myself among my students, I knew that that was exactly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, being a teacher. And when I came back to Greece to continue my studies, because in the meantime, I took a semester gap from college, um, I found myself being the super teacher. You know why? Because everybody wanted to meet that little crazy girl who was willing to go to Washington State, Washington, um, yeah, State, not D.C., because in the beginning, I, was, I thought I was going to the, to the state. Then I realized that I was going to Washington, D.C. State, whatever, my dyslexia. So. <laughs> That's true. So, um, yeah, everybody wanted to meet that crazy girl. And for seven years, I was working in non-formal educational settings. And you know why? Because I wanted to prove to myself and the world that teachers matter. And I did it. I was the most perfect teacher you can, every, you can possibly imagine. All my students, for seven years, 100 success they had in, EFL, in all their EFL exams. So I was like, that's it. You know, I'm the best. Till I get fired. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember that I wasn't, I wasn't smiling or laughing at that day. Uh, today I do. <laughs> I was fired. You know why? Because there was someone there who could do the same job with me, that's what she says, with three euros less per hour. Three euros less per hour. That's, that was exactly how they valued my work, three euros. 
So I, I was really confused and I said, my goodness, this is so unfair. But maybe it's because I need to change the, the page of my career and I need to go to the formal education setting, not the non-formal. Maybe there they would respect me and my efforts, you know? So after a while I managed to find a, a work only to realize that there was a big problem there for me waiting, dyslexia. I found myself in a private primary school and I saw myself in a classroom with a lot of students with dyslexia and they were like, ah, miss, what are you talking about? For the next four years of my life, I lost all my superpowers. I was a completely fool in the classroom, having all these amazingly smart students in front of me. It was quite obvious, they were smart, I was ignorant. And I was ignorant because I told them, you know, I was really honest with them, guys, there are no master's degrees in the world for EFL and dyslexia, there are no resources and tools out there, there are no seminars, what am I supposed to do, you know, just, guys, give me some time, I need to find a way to really unlock your magical potential, because it's very obvious that you're smart and I am very ignorant, but I need your help. Guys, can you be my teachers? Can you teach me how to do it? So, my students became my teachers. And, you know, little by little, we were getting better. And I had some other tricks too. I told them that I make spelling mistakes, and it's true. And they told me, whoa, now we can share our common secret, Miss Angela. We're not gonna say to anyone, you're safe with us. And then I told them, you know, do you like my t-shirt? And they said, yes. Uh, Miss Angela, I, we can't really read this word, but um, this one, I think, has a spelling mistake. And I said, what? You mean this K in the cat? They said, yes. And I said, darling, sorry, but the fashion designer had this K, thought that this K is a piece of art, and he charges this K for 150 euros. How about that? The theory of relativity explained, you know? So they were like, cool, I love spelling mistakes. And we're trying to really connect with the heart. And day after day, we were succeeded, but that was not enough. I realized that I had to do something more drastic because there were so many students out there that they couldn't have a global voice just because some teachers thought that they couldn't. So I went to my colleagues and I went to the head director of studies and I went to the big boss and I said to them, listen, I'm gonna leave school, I'm gonna go back to the, to the desks, I'm gonna study, cognitive psychology and anything that it takes for me to create all the tools that I don't have just to be able to support the rights of my students. You know what happened? I found out that teachers can be bullied too. All of my colleagues were telling me, who do you think you are that you can change the system? You're gonna do this and you're gonna be back here and wanna change, you're gonna change the way that we're teaching? And my boss said to me, uh, well, Miss Papa, it's obvious that you want to invest on these kids. Well, these kids are not on my agenda, so maybe you have to think about another place to do it. A month later, I was fired again. This time, it was very serious. Because this time, I start saying to myself, you know, you're not gonna change your career page, Maybe you should change your career. There's something wrong here. Everywhere you go, people fire you, you know? And I said, okay, maybe I will become a singer. I have a good voice. Or a fashion designer. And I can combine all the knowledge that I have for dyslexia, creating tissues like this, make a living. Or maybe go back to desks. Because the eyes of my students were there. And they were telling me, Miss Angela, you have a responsibility. You need to help us. You are our only hope. We love you. Please, do not abandon us. And I couldn't sleep at night. Honestly, I couldn't sleep at night. So I found myself, after 11 years of teaching, back in the desks, trying to figure out how I'm going to hack this brain, creating all the resources and the tools that I needed in order to be able to do it. And you know what? After years of great effort and passion, I did it. I had all the tools that I wanted. And then, I came back to Greece only to realize that they, there was another problem. The problem was that there were no job opportunities for the new job profession I had accidentally 
invented. You see, there were no teachers that they the EFL teachers that they taught English as a foreign language to students with dyslexia learning differences, and there were no job opportunities for me. So what did I do? I decided to hire myself. How? Well, I guess this time nobody could fire me. <laughs> well, I invented every single penny I had. I was broke for years. I managed to find funds from the European Union for women entrepreneurship. I trained the best teachers in the world, and I love dyslexia. Door opened for the very first time, the first school in the world highly specialized on EFL and dyslexia. And it opened its hug to 10%, 10 to 20% of global population to have the right of a global voice. And guess what happened? 100% success in all EFL exams. Finally, after so many years, I found my superpower back. You know, and another amazing opportunity also happened. A big private school came and they told me, you know, amazing, what you have done is a miracle. How did you do it? Well, we don't care how did you do it, but come with us. Let's combine our forces, the formal education with the non-formal education, and see what's going to happen. And I said, yeah, that's it. We're going to change the world now. Yeah, now I got it, you know? <laughs> well, you know what happened after a few months when I went to that private school? I felt and I was treated like a famous new product that attracted new customers. No mission, no vision, nothing. Everything was empty. Once, once again, the same story, once again. Guess what? Time for goodbyes, one more time. Well, this time, I wasn't fired. I resigned. <laughs> That's a change. <sighs> yes. Only to find myself back in my global mission for all students' right for a global voice. And, and I found myself, you know, my magic shoes again, you see? Where did you go? Where did I go? Everywhere, Uppsala, Sweden, Boston, Harvard, everywhere you can possibly imagine, to train the teachers, to share my knowledge, share my experience, share my tools, most of the times on a volunteer base. And after all these journeys, after all these magic moments, I found myself on the stage of the Global Teacher Prize between the 50 top educators in the world looking up in the sky because I knew that only the sky is the limit for the power of love, only the sky, the sky is the limit for the power that every single human being has if he or she decides to use it. But do you think that behind this face there were no problems? Oh no, oh no. I was on that stage, my friends, with no government support and upgraded bullying from a big foundation and an NGO that supports students with dyslexia. You know what happened with the big foundation? They called me the first day after my nomination. They told me, Miss Papa, oh my goodness, we are so embarrassed because you haven't received the scholarship from us. And I said, please don't be embarrassed. They just, you know, try to work here together. And I said, yes, this time a big foundation is with me. I'm going to change the world, you know? Well, no. You know what happened? A week later, I found myself in these big offices with these big, long, you know, tables with all the serious people behind with the ties and everything, looking at me like, and telling me, Miss Papa, we're trying to find you in your CVs and everything, and we're trying to, you know, uh, study your work, but we didn't find you anywhere. Why they told me this? Who cares? Because at that moment, I realized that the most important thing is that the bigger the problem, the greater the possibility. Maybe that's why I found myself, after a few days, right next to the most influential political and educational leaders in the world. I met my mentor, Irina Bokova. She's the general director of UNESCO, designing with her the, the next 
education for the 21st century, education for sustainable development. Maybe that's why I found the courage when I came back to Greece from Dubai to change and transform, I love dyslexia, to free dyslexia. So I can actually support the right for quality education, not only to students with learning differences, but to every single student on this planet. Maybe that's why it's time for me to say a big thank you and express my gratitude to all these people who gave me all these huge problems. You know why? Because they helped me to get lost. It is only when you get lost that you have the potential to find your purpose in life, your real purpose in life, and also to find the inner strength to follow it. And I need to thank my wonderful colleagues, my wonderful friends and my wonderful family. Without them, nothing would be possible. It's only the team that makes you to do something important. It's never only one person, it's a team. And we need to understand this. There are so many people around us that they can support, but there are so many people that they can't. They are all very helpful, all very helpful. Actually, the same helpful. But above everybody and everyone, I need to, to, to say the biggest thank you in the world to the most amazing, amazing students that I have, the students with this amazingly different brain that is 100 years ahead of us. Believe me, that's why we cannot understand these people. They are ahead. And even when they are 70 years old, because I have 70 years old students, they are there, thirsty for knowledge, proving that teachers matter. And I need to thank them. You know why? because they taught me that I don't need these shoes anymore. I don't need my magic red shoes anymore. I really don't. You know why I don't need them? Because I have finally found my way home. And you know where is home? Home is this heartbeat right here in front of you. This heartbeat that beats with so much passion to change the world with love. This heartbeat that is the most important thing in life that we all have and we all share, but we need to hear, to hear closely what it wants to say to us. This heartbeat that whispers me what Aristotle said, that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. At the post ο δάσκαλός μου Αριστοτέλης είναι εδώ μέσα που μου λέει το να εκπαιδεύεις το πνεύμα χωρίς την καρδιά, αγγελική, δεν είναι παιδεία. Ελλάδα, το ακούς. Το ακούς, Ελλάδα. I just hope that by now, you have figured out how I managed to hack the brain of dyslexia. I love you. Thank you very much.